Hello, my friends. So great to be with you again. Um, just as we begin to uh, gather today, just a couple of things that um, I just want to remind you of. Um, you know, we had this uh, uh, announcement from Governor Abbott yesterday saying that he is going to open things up. I'm always amazed, um, not really amazed, but I... Um, I guess an observation I have is how polarized people are. They're either, oh my gosh, he's doing great, or oh my gosh, this is so dangerous. Um, and time is definitely going to tell the answer in response to that um, <clears throat> and what happens by people getting infected and, and things like that. I, I, in the meantime, I, I just encourage you and just want you to know here at St. John's, um, we do intend to follow uh, not necessarily the governor but our bishop and what our bishops asked us to do and we've signed a covenant saying that um, we're going to make every effort possible to make this place as sanitized clean and and, and as possible for you and uh, just so you know some of those things that will be coming out I encourage you look on the e-news especially this week as um, that comes forward and you will see some of the details we have to do just to make sure everything's ready. Two other uh, pieces I just wanted to share with you. Uh, number one, it is coming up on the graduation for six of our seniors. Um, I read their names on Sunday, but I'm going to uh, share with you um, their names again and uh, because we're, we're trying to do something for them, and I would love for you to participate. So they are Jackson Austin, Emma Inglefield, Jesse Forgione, Hayden Hardaway, Kyle Smith and Braxton Zarate. And really what we're trying to do is to get you uh, to get on your phone. All you have to do is get on your phone to the camera app and to um, uh, turn it from photo to video, press the red button, it'll record you. And as it records you, um, just give a little um, message to your um Excuse me, I have something pop up on my screen. Just give a little message to uh, the seniors in general and maybe a shout out to one or two or maybe a memory or something. And then all you do is on your phone, then email that or text that to uh, Emma or to, um, well, to Emma um, Kiprose, who's our youth person, and she's going to be putting all that together. So if you need Emma's information, please call Jeannie Laredo. But do that. That would be so great. That's nice for the kids. Lastly, if you have an iPhone or an Android and you have the actual Facebook app, which I encourage you, please do. And then if you are interested in doing Noonday Prayer, we could use some more um, volunteers who would do this. It's not very hard and I just would love to have you do it. So if you can do that, that'd be great. All right, let us continue with our prayers today and... Uh, as we've been doing, we gather on page 138, and let us breathe. <sighs> all the stress and nervousness and all the unrest, breathe in the breath of God, and breathe it out. <sighs> Lord, I just give that to you. Don't know about you, but my uh, my uh, temper is shorter, right? I'm getting a little crankier. So uh, hopefully y'all aren't doing the same, but I don't know what it's caused by. Let us continue with Psalm 113, this portion. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. All right, um, one of the things that uh, we're going to do is read from Matthew. Um, this is the second portion of the parable that started yesterday, and I'll explain that a little bit. But if you're reading in your own Bible, it's Matthew chapter 13. And then we're going to start at verse 18 and go through 23. 
So reading from Matthew. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for the one sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned, today's uh, passage is an explanation of the parable of the sower. Um, Jesus is in some village. I tried to look this up in the scripture, went back a couple chapters. I couldn't quite figure it out. Probably near Capernaum um, on the north side of the Sea of Galilee. And in fact, what he's done is he's put out in one of the fishing boats and the people are all up on the 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 um the shore and it's kind of a natural amphitheater because it's a it's a bowl right so you got the level water he's in a boat and they're all sitting up here and as if you've ever been around water you know how well sound carries across water it's a beautiful thing and so he starts teaching now i'm going to review it said a little bit here but i'm going to review just a little bit what it said it said um in sowing seed some falls on the path and then what it said were birds eat them up and they go away, right? And then some on rocky ground without soil. And then it may take a root, but when the sun comes up and there's not enough soil and water and things like that, it just withers. Some fell among thorns. That's pretty easy. And it was choked out. And then some fell in the good soil, which yield multiple times the grain that was sown. Well, we get an explanation to the disciples who apparently, I think they must have been confused at the parable and they wanted some deeper understanding because now they've retreated from the people. This is a later time and they're around him, around Jesus saying, what in the world was this all about? And I've always wondered this, what's the confusion in this parable, right? The parable seems pretty uh, straightforward and understanding in our day and age and so I'm thinking maybe what was the context then that they're going, what in the world are you saying, Jesus? Um, and then you get to thinking, well, the way this farmer sows seeds, there's two things we learn about this farmer. Either the farmer is very wealthy or is sort of foolish, not very smart in the way they sow seeds because uh, seed then is a precious commodity. You don't just throw it around or drop it haz haphazardly, then you lose it, right? And so they don't want to lose it. They want to be able to produce grain. And so perhaps the confusion is due to the behavior of a farmer. And that's part of the great piece about this is that if God is sowing all these seeds in all these places where we don't believe things would grow, what does that say about God? Either God is foolish or perhaps more importantly, God is gracious. God is willing to drop seed in places where we don't think it would normally grow. Well, as we reflect on this passage in the Gospels, I tried to give you a little summary of how I think this might have played out, right? So what um, people did Jesus encounter that were like on the path, right? Where it dropped and then immediately it seemed like it was eaten by birds and it went away. And I got to thinking, um, maybe that was like the Pharisees. No matter what he said, the Pharisees never seemed to even take that seed for very long. It just seemed to disappear. And that may have seemed like a waste, but you got to think also there was a Pharisee named Saul who later became Paul, who later became this tremendous New Testament theologian and writer, and then became probably the greatest church planter ever in the history of the world. And so if God hadn't been willing to drop that seed in the life of Paul, what would have been of that? So who would have been the rocky soil that lacks that depth, right? And I got to thinking, maybe Mary Magdalene. We don't know Mary Magdalene's life. 
I don't know what her childhood, childhood was like or her young adult life and what would have led her into uh, the situation that she lived in, but we, we get some sense that there was a bit of sketchiness to her life. And the question could easily be, why would you throw seeds of grace there? What kind of root are they ever going to take? But look at what became of Mary Magdalene. She got to be the one who got to see the resurrected Jesus first and hear that first. What an amazing turn. And who would have been the thorns? <clears throat> I think of like the rich young ruler. Remember, this guy has all this wealth and he comes and he thinks he's obeying the law and Jesus tells him, here's how you do it. And he goes away. We don't know how that turned out for the guy. We don't know if he gave his... Uh, wealth away to the poor, sort of like St. Francis of Assisi, and, and decided to follow Jesus or not. But that would be one where those things in his life choked out the gospel message. Or how about Judas Iscariot? He lived with Jesus for three years. He was doing all these things, and it comes to the very culmination of Jesus' life, and what does he want to do? Betray Jesus in such a way that this is one of the thoughts, is that he would then um, and forced Jesus into a place where he would have to become this conquering Messiah, not a sacrificial, sacrificing Messiah. And so, again, it's choked out. And then who was the fertile soil? Well, there are really too many to name. We don't know. Martha and Mary, maybe. Lazarus, the disciples. I mean, think, how random were those guys? And yet, look at what has become. Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea. Who knows how deep the seed grew in them and how it flourished and how many people in their lives they taught the good news of Jesus. What this does, though, is it brings the parable all the way to us. Which soil are we? Or even if you look back, were we? Right? So uh, which circumstances do, do we deal with? Have we been the path where things have come and flittered? rock where we wanted to do something and after a while it withered away, thorns where we got choked out by all these concerns in life, or the fertile soil. And the reality is, I'm not sure this thing is static any more than like if you have a garden, the garden is static in your backyard or your side yard or wherever it may be, unless that garden is nurtured or neglected, it determines... <laughs> What the situation is. A neglected garden is not growing any seeds, right? Very, very rarely will it. Well, perhaps as important or more, more so, who around us is in these situations that we can look in their lives and say, oh, they're like the path or um, the rocky soil or the thorns or the fertile soil. And to whom do we need to be like God and sow those seeds of grace that they might flourish? And who knows the hundreds, the thousands, maybe the millions in this world that they might touch with the good news of God's grace. May we be uh, prodigious, right? Great sowers of the seed, just as God has done in us. Amen. As I uh, continue to do for our prayers, if you have a prayer book, I invite you uh, to turn back to page 819. I'm going to look on page 819, 823, and 824 today. I have three additional prayers that are from the prayers in the back of our book. All of these, I believe, uh, speak to the situations that we are in, either as a church or in our world, and so let us pray. This first one is for, for church musicians and artists. So we think of especially this day, Tish and Ian who does the guitar and Bill who has been singing for us. O oh God, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, be ever present with your servants, all who seek through art and music to perfect the praises offered by your people on earth and grant to them even now glimpses of your beauty and make them worthy at length to behold it unveiled forevermore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give great thanks for them. They are such a blessing to us. Now if you flip over to page 823, there's one for, it's called Social Justice, but I think this, um, I don't know that the title is perfectly apt, but they know better than me. But let us pray. I love this. This is um, 
God's holy and life-giving spirit as we get to celebrate coming up as we move towards Pentecost. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, especially the hearts of the people of this and every land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I guess my question about the aptness of the name is that divisions part. Oh my gosh, that's so prevalent. I can't imagine a more important prayer that we pray. And then um, on page 824 for the unemployed, number 30. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who suffer want and anxiety from lack of work. We really especially lift up, Lord, this day the, um, the, those who have lost jobs because of this pandemic, who have put unemployment close to depression-level errors. Guide the people of this land so to use our public and private wealth that all may find suitable and fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to lift up names. You can put them here. You can email them to Jenny for the healing service or to Linda Lund for the healing service that we're going to do next Tuesday, a week from uh, today, and uh, we will continue to lift them up. So let us lift up those that we love, that we know need our prayers. For Clark, Lord, for Sarah, Francis. Um, Lord, as we pray all these names virtually now and at different times, we know that you hear our prayers and we give thanks, Lord, that you will respond and do those things as our best for us. And for that and the work you are doing and will do, we give you thanks and praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, let us continue with the prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. And as I mentioned some time ago, I really do hope that as you pray this, you've broken it down and little things come to your mind. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And there at the bottom of page 138, our closing collect. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, which is us, your people. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. My goodness, my friends, it's such a joy and blessing to be with you even in the COVID-19 craziness and the crankiness that I experience at times. It's still such a blessing to be able to do this with you. I pray the Lord blesses you this day. I pray that you, uh, as you go about in the opening, that you are safe, wear masks, wash your hands, do all those things, not only for yourself, but especially for those around us for, man, it would break my heart if I was ever part of being the spread of that and it really hurt someone and their livelihood. May the Lord bless you and keep you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.